and I'm going to do a book review today actually. It's called, the book is called Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus. Now before I do that, I did want to show you my, one of my favorite Doctor Who t-shirts. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that picture of the TARDIS. And Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus, I happened to see this at a bookstore. And I didn't buy it because, of course, it was very expensive, but I was able to get it on interlibrary loan from the library. And it's a very good book. It's basically a critical analysis of the digital economy and what corporations need to be doing to be sustainable in the digital econ economy, what all businesses should be doing. And there's some really interesting parts that I'm going to read you now. Uh, one of his criticisms is that corporations tend to work too hard on short-term gain for shareholders instead of long-term gain in terms of sustainability. And as a, an example, and he, he considers this, he says, this is all part of American capitalism. It's, it's supported by our legal system. And he's right. Now, the example he gives here is Amazon. Amazon provides the clearest example of traditional corporate values amplified through a digital platform monopoly. As the New York Times explained, at first those in the publishing business considered it a cute toy. You could see a book's exact rate sales ranking and a useful counterweight to Barnes & Noble and Borders, chains willing to throw their weight around. Now, Borders is dead, Barnes & Noble is weak, and Amazon owns the publishing platform of the digital era. All true. It all started so innocently. With Amazon, everyone got equal footing, so small publishers could more effectively compete against the majors. No more battles over getting B&N to stock your book. This website sold everything to everyone. Consumers could find what they wanted more easily, read peer recommendations, and feel assured of getting the best price. Authors and others with websites could become Amazon associates, and I am an Amazon associate, by the way, and make a little money, and that is a little money, for recommending books through links. As the company grew, its catalog became a replacement for books in print, the industry's original title index and its rankings became the new bestseller list. Up to that point, it appeared that an entire industry had been cracked open and democratized, thanks to the disruptive power of the internet. Well, he goes on to say more, and I should acknowledge that the author is uh, Douglas Rushkoff. He goes on to say, of course, with hindsight, we now see that Amazon is less a bookseller than a business plan. As Forbes put it, only half admiringly, unlike the other big companies that symbolize our times, Google, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon did not rise to power by inventing a new product or service. It came to power by systematically taking down an entire existing industry. And is that a real surprise? The publishing industry has the lousiest business model ever. In all of the company's moves, in each of the ways it leverages its platform monopoly, notice he uses that word monopoly twice, we see the digital activation of the earliest tenets of corporatism. Amazon amplifies the power of central authorities. It first appeared that it would empower the independent publisher by giving everyone a place on its infinite shelf space, but it eventually grew into the center of the publishing universe. Everyone is the same size, tiny, compared to the platform on which they sell and interact. Amazon sets the prices, the terms, the technologies, the copy protection, the privacy of readers, everything. Well, I won't go on from there because he does go on from there quite a bit, and it's not complimentary. Um, he so much as says that the Amazon approach is unsustainable, and it's something to think about. 
for all of us. But um, I am an Amazon affiliate, and I can't deny that. Uh, there was a, a quote from Catch-22, I'm trying to remember. Something to the effect that somebody asked Yossarian, if you've ever read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about, or seen the movie. If everybody jumped off a, a cliff, would you do it too? And he said something like, if everybody did it, I'd be crazy not to. So there's a certain amount of that going on, I think. He, he does go on to mention that this is actually the epitome of American, uh, what do you call it, uh, capitalism, the way it works and is legally supported because of the whole idea that a company is supposed to maximize its value for shareholders, even if it takes huge losses in the process. And the book industry has been a huge loss for Amazon. That's another point he makes in here. Now, I haven't quite finished the book, but I've seen the end, and I'm tempted to just skip right to it because it talks about the solutions, and I'm really looking forward to that. So in any case, um, I highly recommend this book, not just because of what it says about Amazon, but because of its uh, observations about business, sustainability, and the digital economy in general. But I thought the stuff about Amazon really kind of demonstrated well what he was talking about. Douglas Rushkoff, Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus. I think it was the title that attracted me. So hopefully Google won't have a problem with my saying this. And as for Amazon, hopefully they don't have they don't have a problem carrying the book, so they shouldn't have a problem with my doing this video, right? Right. I think this merits a jammy dodger. That I'll get into the story of why I love jammy dodgers. It all has to do with Doctor Who later. Thanks a lot.